What's going on everybody? Good morning and it's time for one final video to get all our ducks in order before we start looking at the Seahawks roster in terms of their outgoing players or potentially outgoing players. And we've already talked about cuts, we've talked about restructures, we've talked about extensions. There's one last thing that needs to be established before we move on. I'm talking about void years. Void years in contracts. I made this video last year, but I thought it would be a good idea to make the basic idea over again just to make sure we're all on the same page and we all understand how these contracts work. And you may notice on screen I have the Spotrack page for Micah Hyde pulled up. And some of you guys might be wondering why Micah Hyde, because he is an example of what I'm going to be talking about in this video. Void years on a contract. So traditionally, in pretty much any sport, but let's just talk about the NFL. You look at a contract, you see how many years the contract is, you see how much money is in the contract, and you go, okay, the team is going to owe the player this amount of money over the duration of the contract. We don't know exactly how it's going to be spread out. It could be a situation where you're talking about a lot of the monies in the final year and very little of the monies in the first year. But at the end of the day, the contract is for that long and the player is going to get that much. Now, of course, there are other considerations. Not all money in the NFL is guaranteed. The player could get released before the end of the contract and then he only sees a portion of that money. The portion of the money that he sees being the guaranteed money or the bonus money. So there are some wrinkles within that, but this is another kind of wrinkle. Void years. <coughs> So Micah Parsons recently signed a two-year, $19.25 million contract with the Buffalo Bills. So common sense would say, okay, two years, he maybe the first year he gets like nine and a quarter, and then the second year he gets ten. Or maybe that first year he'll get like seven, and then the second year he's gonna get, what would that be, twelve and a quarter. Oh, like whatever it is, that's basically how it's going to break out. That's what the team is going to have to put against their cap to have that player. Not the case, because when the Bills decided to restructure Micah Hyde's contract, they used void years to reduce his cap hit. So, take a look. You can see the terms of this contract. You can see 2021, 2022, the current year, and then you've got the 2023 year. So what the Bills did going into the 2022 season is they restructured Micah Hyde so they could afford more players. They reduced his cap hit in the initial years of the deal down significantly. And in order to make up for it, they pushed chunks of the cap hit, just little chunks, but chunks of the cap hit into future years. So... 2024, the Bills are going to have him at $1.1 million on the cap. And 2025, they're going to have another $1.1 million. And in 2026, they're going to have another $1.1 million. But here's the thing. Micah Hyde will not be on the Bills. He's a free agent in 2024. So he will count for money against the Bills' salary cap even though he won't be on the Bills. Or maybe the Bills re-sign him going into 2024 and then his cap hit will be whatever his new contract dictates plus the $1.1 million left over from the old contract. So either way, he's getting the same amount of money for the same amount of effort. They're just pushing the cap hit back into future years where he's not even going to be on the team. Those years are called void years and it allows teams to spread the money out a little bit at the cost of paying for players who are no longer going to be on that team. So you are probably going to see a lot of teams utilize void years this offseason to sign players to bigger contracts, to entice them with bigger deals without having to feel the full pain of it all at once. Let's use Geno Smith as an example here. Let's talk about Geno for a little bit here because we may use void years on Geno. The Seahawks have done this before, although they don't do it a lot. They did it with Gerald Everett, and they did it with um, uh, Ger um, uh, Ethan Posick. So we may do it again this year, 
If we do, I want to give some examples of what it could look like and why it helps. So, Geno Smith. Let's say, I'm just going to give you a number. If you don't like it, that's cool, but it's the number we're going to work with for the time being. Three years, 105 million. Three years, 105 million. All the contracts I'm going to propose in this video are of that exact same amount for that exact same duration. So this first one utilizes no tricks whatsoever. It's just straight. 35 million, 35 million, 35 million. He gets his 105 million over three years. Done. So that's not, that's not what we want, right? That's um, not desirable. Okay. Let's look at the backloading. 20 million, 35 million, and then the last year, 50 million. So you basically take 15 million from year one, push it to year three. That's a standard NFL contract. That's something that we could possibly see here. But what does a void year do? Because this $20 million cap hit in 2023 is still pretty fat. And I imagine that a lot of people would probably want to get this cap hit down even a little bit more. Especially if we're going to go in on trying to win a Super Bowl this year. Or at the very least, try to push ourselves into contention. Pete Carroll sounds to me like, like a guy who's ready to swing for the fences. And if he does, you might want to use the magic of void years to create more cap space. Here's an example of how it could work. And I want to be very clear about this. The ability to use void years is pretty unlimited in the NFL. You can kind of do whatever you want to do. I'm just presenting one potential example to give you an idea of how it can help. So in this first example, I utilized one void year. So it would be 2023, 2024, 2026. Okay, 2026. So I got Gino's cap hit in year one, this upcoming year, down to 16 million. I got it down to 33 million in year two. So f 2 million less. And I got it down to 48 million in year three. That's another 2 million less from the backloaded offer I put together in this column. And we still end up at the exact same amount because we have a void year. And basically, when you get to that year, that fourth year, so it would be like I said, 2026, Geno Smith will have an $8 million cap hit against your cap but he will not be on your team. He will be a free agent playing somewhere else. Or you re-sign him, but the void year is still there. So let's say after 2025, we really like Gino. We re-sign him again. We give him a new contract, and that first year cap hit is, let's call it 15 million. 15 million. So Gino's cap hit, effectively, in 2026, would be the 15 million plus the 8 million. So 23 million. So the void year cap hit cannot go away, but it's a way to basically push a little bit of the pain into a future year. And remember, by 2026, the cap should go through the roof. The cap should be massive by 2026. 8 million won't be that big of a deal. But what if you want to use more than one void year? You can do that. You can 100% do that. I have another example here. I got his one year one cap hit to 14. Year two is down to 31, and year three is down to 45. I just put a $7.5 million cap hit in void year one and void year two, and we got to the exact same place. It's a three-year, $105 million deal. But now, that first year when you're really trying to push, you only owe him $14 million. And year two, $31 million, we're starting to get a little more reasonable here, especially for a quarterback of Geno's abilities and caliber. It starts to make sense. You can go, I believe, as high as five void years, but I'm only going to do three for the purposes of this video, but I think you guys get it. Okay, here's an extreme example of what you could do if you really want to go nuts here. Year one, 11 million. 11 million dollar cap hit for Geno year one. You can do that. 27 million year two. Four million less than the previous deal. And then 40 million in year three. Five million less than the previous proposed deal. And then you hit him with three $9 million void years. 2026, 2027, 2028. Again, that sounds unpleasant, and don't get me wrong, it is. Nobody wants to be paying $27 million over three years to a player who may not even be on your team. But look how much easier it makes the years when you actually do have him.
look how much easier it makes it to build a team around your quarterback when you only have to worry about that relatively moderate cap hit for that one year. And again, by the time we get to these years, the cap will probably have gone through the roof. So the $9 million now is not going to be the same as $9 million later. But again, I want to stress, the team can kind of do whatever they want with void years. They could make each void year $1 million. They could make each void year $2 million. They could make each void year $5 million, $10 million. There's a lot of artistry here. There's a lot of freedom. So the void years could be very, very small and just a way to make it a little bit more appealing in the present time. Like, for instance, the Micah Hyde example. You can see that the money that is on the void years in 2024, 2025, 2026, pretty insignificant, right? Like, we're talking about $1.1 million against a salary cap that is going to be pushing close to $300 million. Does anybody in the NFL care about that? So, understand, I presented this example as a Geno contract. You can do this with anyone. You can do it with players who are currently under contract with your team. You can do it with your outgoing free agents. You can do it with your incoming free agents. So, understand that at the end of the day, we can go through these figures all we want to. We can do calculations. We can count um, cap space against expected deals. There is always a way to make it work, pretty much. It's going to hurt a little bit later, but you can make it work. The only question is, do you want to? So we could see things like this, void years, happening with just about anybody. We could see void years happening with a guy like Rashad Penny. We could see it happening with a guy like Deron Payne if we're bringing him in. Doesn't matter. It always works for anybody. See you guys later. Go Hawks. Hope you learned something today.